We're going to see how this works out. I decided to stand tonight. Big shift. So let's just go right into it. This is why I hate Valentine's Day. Well, I don't hate it. I loathe it. I loathe it. I loathe it a lot. It's like when you like something a lot, but I loathe it. 1991, I'm 16, um, and uh, I have a girlfriend. Now, this is this is news to me. I'm not, this is like, what, I don't know what's happened. I don't know, I don't understand. I don't get, I don't understand why some, anyone is into this. I don't, I, I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me because I've just been a total, like, geek, dork kid who just, like, doesn't. When I was 12, my nose was bigger than my face. My shoe size was a size 11, and I was like 5'2". You know, I mean, I just was like, I was bozo. And so, you know, so it's really, when you think about it, 16 is not that much further along. You think it is, but it's, it, you're a fucking mess. So, I'm taking the bus to Providence. So I live in Johnston, which is about 10 minutes away. I'm taking the bus. And uh, I usually don't take the bus. I usually decide that I don't really want to take the bus. I'll get a ride from my mom. But I'm like, I really feel like taking the bus. She's like, all right, so I'll take the bus. And there kind of is this central transit station in Providence where you get off, you get on another bus, you go somewhere else. But instead, I get off, I say hello to my girlfriend, we get back on the bus and go back to my house. We then call our school, which is a weird alternative school of 90 kids, and we tell sis, the secretary, that we're not coming in because it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> Be careful, you guys, is what she says. Now, Sonia is experienced. I am not. I don't know what I'm doing at all in any way, shape, or form. She's been around the block a little bit more. She's been doing stuff. She's told me what we're going to do to make this work. Um, which involves her giving me a hand job so that I ejaculate so that we, we actually do have sex, I don't come very fast. I, this is something else I don't really understand or know about, I just kind of go along like, yes, right, I mean, obviously, yes. So, um, so she's in the process of this, and I'm, you have to understand uh, uh, that, well, you know, you've all been there. I think at this point, you know, that you you just I was having an out of body experience. I wasn't I wasn't in here anyway. So her trying to do this was not going anywhere. I mean, this like a half hour goes by. She's like, wow. I'm like, what? Um, so then she's like, well, maybe we should just have sex. I'm like, okay. Oh. All right. So again. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no sensation from the neck down. Like, I don't know, like this, this, if somebody like stabbed me, I wouldn't feel it. I was just numb. I didn't know what was going on. Because I was so fucking scared out of my mind. I didn't, I didn't, I, you know, here's a, a, a naked, full, at this point I have not, this is the first, you know, we have done things, but this is like, she's naked.
So, so I don't know what is happening. I'm going and going and going and going and going. Again, like, she's like, what? you're lasting a really long time. I don't know that that's what's going on. I mean, 35 minutes. 40 minutes. I'm using muscles I've never used. I'm cramping. I don't know what is going on. She starts saying, I'm coming. I'm like, what? Because I thought guys came and girls didn't. Again, it's 1991. I don't know what the fuck is happening. I didn't do research. I didn't like ask my friends. I didn't want my friends' advice because I knew they'd be like, oh, fuck the I want them. I'll be fucking deal. Just get in there. It's like fucking hell. Hey, whoa. I'm like, I don't even know what that I don't know. Slow down for one thing. You sound like you're ordering a donut. It doesn't sound like you're telling me about having sex. So, so, so I'm just going, 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 going. Finally, I ejaculate. That was it. It was just like, you know. Then we watched E.T. on VHS. Um, I'm pretty sure we watched Say Anything, which was my favorite movie at the time, because I was a total fucking romantic, you know. And so Valentine's Day was great. It was wonderful. It was a really sweet, you know, like, I mean, how fucking ridiculous is it to lose your virginity on Valentine's Day? I'll tell you, it's fucking ridiculous. And this is why. Because of the after effects of who you choose to be with on that particular day to lose your virginity with. So if you have a nice person, your history or thoughts about Valentine's Day and into the future can be very sweet and nice and gentle and loving and feel like a waterfall and every time you think of it, it's just water flowing over your face. For me, it was like icicles stabbing my eyes because Sonia decided to break up with me like a month, month and a half later. No real reason other than, well, I don't want to marry you, so I don't see the point. <laughs> we're, we're 16, it's like the worst fucking excuse on the planet. But I was, you know, I was devastated. You know, this is my first girlfriend. Again, I didn't understand why a girl would like me in the first place. And so I made a very noble gesture. But, you know, noble. <laughs> you see, I had, I had a very interesting haircut when I was 16. I went through phases. But at this point, I had one piece of hair here, just one. Just about that, that long. So I kind of looked like, uh, well, you know Martin Short in Saturday Night Live when he played that character, Ed Grimley? I kind of looked like that, just this big piece. And then I had no hair, it was shaved. But then I had this magical thing. I had this magical piece of hair coming out the back, right? Right about, right about here. And it was a different color, it was blonde, and it was braided. It was a fucking tail. I had a tail <laughs> coming out of my head. Now we all know that tails are completely inappropriate for any occasion, lifestyle, or any kind of, you know, if you want to be in society, this is not a good choice. But I cut it off. I cut off. Just take it. There I am, sitting on the stairs, eating a little Debbie. Take it. Take it. <laughs> she wouldn't take it. She refused to take it. The more I tried to give it to her, the worse it got. And finally, I kind of gave up on that. And she just started being fucking mean. Like, really mean. Saying incredibly mean shit to me. Um, saying mean things about me when I was right there to other people. You know, really trying to get me to hate her so that I would move on. I mean, I understand the psychology around it now, but then I was just, like, really confused. So, you know, life goes on. 
somebody else finds me attractive, very weird, and I have sex with them. So, life, 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 life. Um, but I continue to not enjoy Valentine's Day. I continue to not enjoy it because, like, my memory of it, even though the first memory of it was great, it was tainted by someone who was, you know, my first love who was really awful to me in the end. So it's really easy to then jump on the anti-Valentine's Day bandwagon. Right? But as an adult and someone who severely, and some of you know this, like, hates Christmas, <laughs> this is kind of my second worst holiday experience is Valentine's Day. But it's not exactly close to Christmas. I mean, not even, not even, not even a close second, but. But I wanted to explore tonight with you through someone who lives inside of me what love and hate and lust is, really. Because we need, we need to understand this. I think it's a good idea. Do you think it's a good idea? Don't say it. <laughs> it's a wonderful idea. It's a beautiful idea. And for all of you watching out there, thank you. We'll see how long you stay. So the, the element that we are trying to deal with right now is, is lust. <laughs> the animal magnetism that happens between two people cannot be unguarded and unnoticed. It can be un at all. There's no money <laughs> with this. Lust is simple. You see, you go. You do. You move on. That is lust. It's very simple. It is a chemical reaction in the body that goes along with the psychological need Underlying an emotional overwhelm, you could say, and you go towards that. Now, some people call lust love, which is not love at all, but it is lust. So let's move on to hate and hate fucking. Hate fucking is wonderful. Hate fucking is incredible because if you think about it, hate fucking is like lust, except you're usually in love with the person that you hate fucking. In other words, you don't want to hate fuck someone you don't know. Unless you've hated them from afar, and you've never met. So for example, a celebrity, like Kanye, <laughs> who you hate, but you hate him so much that you want to fuck him. <laughs> this, this is a perfect example. But for so many of us, something happens. You get a text, you're not sure what it means, you hate the person that you're in love with for a moment, because they're very, very similar, hate and love. Hate and love, when you think about it. You can love someone, and they can be your sun, your moon, other planets if you want. They can be the whole solar system, the Milky Way. <laughs> and then they can say something like, you're short. <laughs> it happens to everyone. I didn't know you didn't like bananas. And you hate them. You hate them with all of your might, all of your heart, your blood boils, and then it goes cold. And you just, you feel like putting them in a particular position, everyone has a different one, could be against the wall, could be on the floor, could be over a couch, could be under a candle, a very big candle, a small candle. Maybe there's wax, maybe you want to put wax on them while you're fucking them. Maybe. 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 But the point is, is that there's something involved that feels like power. And so you want to get into that. So there's this kind of lust magnetism that occurs <laughs> with this hate. But it's a beautiful hate. It's not a bad hate. It's a wonderful hate, if you think about it. Because you're having sex. <laughs> and the other person is also hate-fucking you. Well, this isn't a one-way, one There's no such thing as one-way hate-fucking. Let's get that, let's get that clear right now. But there is one way in love. Making love, you can do to yourself. <laughs> All right. Personally, I do not think there is a masturbatory element that can be hated. I've studied this in monkeys, rats, centipedes. I've watched, 
I watched them all through a microscope, through a plexiglass wall. I can tell you, all animals do when they are going at it themselves is trying to get a release. A release, and therefore a relief. A re re, if you will. <laughs> and when they finally do get that thing which they are trying to get in order to get off, they go on, they eat some corn, maybe some chips, maybe a little yogurt, it depends on where they're living and how sophisticated they are. They neither do, though, love their mate necessarily, although they might, and we do not know it, we do not have the capacity to completely understand it because we are not at that point in civilization to understand the science of the psychology of theology in the first place. Therefore, so it's weird. I mean, you got to think like, like, where and how do these things come together? And when they do come together, do they come together in a particular way where they're like next to each other or are they like against each other? Are they inside of each other? Like love and hate and lust inside of each other? So like we get to this point, right, where it's really interesting. It's very interesting in the fact that we have this one particular day, this one day out of the year where we are supposed to primarily show our loved one we're up to $136 now individually in the United States since 2010. It used to be 108, but then it changed. We spent $130 on our loved one on Valentine's Day. Not bad. $130. Now, if it is August 5th and you show an extremely huge amount of love to your other person, whatever you want to call them, because the labels are getting out of fucking control at this point. Say you spend $250. There's chocolates, there's roses, all that stuff involved. You have to up the ante now when it comes around to February. Because this is the singular day where we are put on the spot in a particular way to show that love and do it accordingly with our society the way that we are told to do it. So I did like all of this research on like, you know, Valentine's Day and St. Valentine. You know what? It's really, it doesn't, who, no one, no one really knows. It's like there's the Roman Valentine guy, there's like this other dude who's Valentine guy. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. And also, you know, there's a whole point of people saying that this is like a Hallmark holiday. We know it's not a Hallmark. Hallmark did not, and I am not, as we know, paid in any way, shape, or form by a corporation. So, so Hallmark has nothing to do with it. So then what? What do we do? Who are we? What are we going to do? What are we going to be? What are we going to? What are we going to feel? What are we going? And like, you know what I mean? It's like who? Who's okay with lust? Are we okay with lust? Are we okay? Are we okay with it? Are we? Are we not? And that's what I want to get to next. I want to bring in somebody else for a moment. Just for a second. I want to bring in somebody who I feel particularly brings out the best in Valentine's Day. And they're gone. That's it. That was it. Did you miss it? You did. Because they're gone. Because there's no one. There's no one that brings out the best in Valentine's Day because the person doesn't exist. No. Correct. That's all I'm saying. They're all numbers. Zeros and ones, what do they equal? Computers. Are we there? Are we together now? Think about this. Remember when they had that poem that means they were like, love is evil? E-V-O-L. Smart. Drugs. Smart drugs. I personally think that if you didn't have teeth, like none, like zero teeth, now, I don't want to tell you guys that. I don't want to go there. I don't think that this is a good idea. I don't want to tell you. 
tell you about zero teeth. I don't want to tell you about no teeth. If I tell you about no teeth and zero teeth, you're going you're gonna to get that information and you're going to steal it. And this is being streamed. People are seeing this is recorded right now. Yeah. Yeah. No? Yeah. All right. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just because you're coming in now, doesn't, don't think that I'm going to tell you about teeth or no teeth. It's not happening. I'm, I, that ship has sailed, folks. I'm not talking about it. We will talk about something else. And that is fries. <laughs> now, fries represent everything. Because if you think about it really, really hard, and we're going to right now, we're going to get hard in our thoughts. We're going to harden our thoughts. Because that's what thinking hard is. It makes your thought really, like, gelled. A fry is like lust, love, and hate all combined. Because you're putting something into your body that is going to kill it quicker. But it feels amazing. The taste is phenomenal. And as you bite, there's so many things that are going through your subconscious. One of those things is, I could never live a life better than this fry is living right now. There is another thought which continues behind that thought, which is my arteries are going to clock and my children are going to watch me die a slow, painful death when I'm only 61. <laughs> and I'm 30. I'm not. I used to be. And then the other one is just like, if I could turn this fry, just this one fry, just this perfect fry, the crispy, soft inside, if I could just turn this fry into you know, the perfect genitalia, what would, it, what would it look like? What would it feel like? Would I want to look at it? Would I just want to feel it? Would I want to put my hands on it? Who, don't do this by the way. This is not, this is not good in terms of just like sex. Don't do this to anybody. Hey, it's not a good idea. It, it will get you nowhere. It's what cats do. <laughs> have you ever heard of box have sex? It sounds like they are dying the worst death on the planet. It's like a scream from hell. They're not having sex. What are they doing? That's right. It's true. And when they do do that thing, they have led themselves to a place that they cannot get back from because they're just there, you know, there to get, you know, to mate and get, make it on to the next level and get to the next stage and get to the next place and just, you know, make it happen. When I was 12, I was at a Motley Crue concert. It was my first concert. Speaking of firsts, have I told you about this yet? Have I told you about Motley Crue? It was amazing, you know. I mean, it's Motley Crue, you know. These guys are still touring. Everybody was doing this. I didn't know what it meant, but I did it anyway. I did this. And I was with my friends, and I remember I had a, you know, I've got what you call a shy bladder. I don't like to piss in front of other dudes. I fucking hate it, actually. I do not like to go into a bathroom and stand at a urinal while some guy comes next to me, decides that it's perfectly acceptable to belch and fart as loud as he possibly can. And they'd be like, ah! and like talk to me about anything. So I just like, I get clenched up because I just don't want to deal. So I'm waiting in line between White Snake, who I just watched, killer set, and I'm wearing a White Snake shirt that goes down to my knees, by the way, because I couldn't find one that fit me, so I had to get the extra, extra large. And this is also the nose is out here, the feet, you know, I'm just stepping, every guy in front of me, stepping out of the guy over and over again, he's like, watch you! Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry, dude, I have no perception of my body. So, I finally get to the urinal, and there's like, okay, at least ten urinals, I'm somewhere in the middle, and I just stand there, and I just stand there, <laughs> and I wait, and I do, I do not piss, because I can't, because I'm too freaked out. And I go back, so I've got like a very full bladder during Motley Crue, but it doesn't matter. Because I'm doing this, I'm with the crowd, we're together, things are happening. It's amazing. My life is being transformed. 
and Vince Neil, who is the singer of Motley Crue. He's, he's amazing because he doesn't even have to say much in between. I remember him saying a few things like, Oh, yeah! <laughs> like, if you were like, yeah! But I didn't even understand what he was saying. It was like I was watching, like, a Norwegian metal band. <laughs> and I was like, Rotinja! Yeah! Like, what? I don't even know what's happening. But I remember one thing in English that he did say. because they don't actually say the V. Love! People are like, yeah. How many of you are in love? And the stadium erupts. Erupts. Like, people are going ape shit. People are throwing shit at them. They're so excited. I love that, too. When you're so excited by what someone's just done that you spit and throw shit at them. Because you're so just like, oh my god, I can't believe it. A bat. <laughs> and so he changed the song, Too Fast for Love, to Too Fast for Lust. And people were just, it was amazing. But it says something. It says something about where I'm from. It does. It does. And it says something about that culture in general. And I'm talking about the culture of rock and roll. Rock and roll is famous for sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And I like how rock and roll is last. Because it really is the, it's really last on the list. Okay? So, we, we, okay, we're all together, right? Sex is first. We there? So, it's not, it's not about, it's not about love. And, and there are, there are a lot of things that are happening right now. For example, there's a lot of shows, or there were, I don't know if they're around anymore, about sex addiction, love addiction. A lot of these people were in rock bands. And now they're with Dr. Drew. <laughs> Working the steps. Getting through it, because it's hard. You know, your tattoos are fading. It's difficult. It's hard. No, think about it. Think about it. You know, they don't make this, they don't, they don't make this, you know, a lot of Aquanet. They don't make that anymore. You know how hard it is to get your hands on a bottle of Aquanet now? Aquanet, if for those of you who are unfamiliar with Aquanet, Aquanet was a hairspray that if you just did this and you sprayed it, it would stay that way for four days. It was very, very solid. And if you had a lighter and you didn't like someone, you could really do a number on them because of the Aquanet. So Aquanet, Aquanet also helps people from my particular subculture, that being WAPs from Johnston, Rhode Island, really just kind of sail the high seas of hair. <laughs> you know? And the thing is that's really interesting to me as a person is that sometimes when I see uh, a woman walking down the street in Rhode Island when I'm visiting who has this huge hair and like heels that are so tall that she has to walk like that, um, and just dangling earrings, and she's chewing gum. Like I'm like, wow, oh, she's so pretty. And and it's and the thing is, it's like I it, it it's because of what I grew up. It's like this was my first I, I, idea of what women were were like huge mall hair and like the the jean jackets that like were here. You know what I mean? And the little diamond things around the the button thing. And then like a purse that was really with other fake jewels on the purse, and the purse was silver and huge, and there were like three bottles of Aquanet in there, so they could like share with their friends. And the bracelets, the neon bracelets that went down, oh my god, god, it's just like, oh, she's amazing. She's incredible. Oh my god, she likes Batman. Um, so it's interesting like where your mind was, like what your first idea of sexuality or interest might be in someone, and how that kind of locks in a little bit to your psychology. Whether or not you go on to, you know, continue with that as your ideal mate is up to you. Some people, uh, you know, like I had a friend.
girlfriend, and he grew up in, uh, he got into, into punk rock a lot sooner than I did. And so if he ever saw a girl with kind of like the raccoon eye makeup, totally surrounding her eye, you know, it just looked like she was just like, I'm going to eat you. He was like, oh my God, she's so hot. You know, like the crazier the better, you know, the more like, yeah, yeah, like at a concert and she would just be like, fuck you. He'd be like, oh my God, you're my soulmate. Because that's like kind of like what became ideal. So it's, it's interesting what becomes our ideal, because usually our, our ideal has nothing to do with love. In fact, it goes back to the whole hate-fucking thing that my friend was talking about earlier. Have you ever um, been really attracted to somebody, but you hate them? You're like, you're like, oh my god, oh, oh. Like, you want to bite the person. I don't want to touch her. Right? But you don't want them to talk, because that would ruin it. You don't ever want to hear them speak, because then they might say something. Whether that thing is intelligent or stupid or whatever, it's like, you know, you're like, oh, and then all of a sudden they're like, hey. And you're like, no, wrong voice! Wrong sound in your voice, everything, no! And so you just kind of, you know, so because the great thing about projecting onto, onto somebody else and turning the volume down when you're watching it online is is you you don't you don't you don't have to you don't have to get in you don't have to get into it. Although there's some people who maybe the auditory thing like that's their fix, you know, that's their thing. Is is hearing all the like and, and I gotta say, you know, there's there's some stuff out there. I've done research for you guys. And there's some stuff out there. I'm going to send y'all some links. There's some stuff out there that's really weird. <laughs> like, super weird. Like, people just say the wrong things. And people say the wrong things in all different sorts of situations. But especially when it comes to sex that is for other people, that is filmed or whatever. People say the wrong things in these, you know, there's some people get, they get really good at it. They like do it for a number of years. Um, they know all the, dir the, the dirty talk they've got down and everything, but it's kind of like, oh, you like that bunghole? No, you don't say that. You don't. That is wrong. No, he doesn't actually, and he has to like keep it going for another five minutes because the director told him to. What did you just do? That's terrible. That's awful. You know? Wow, I'm talking about that a lot. So the, the, the interesting thing about all of this is that Valentine's Day is a combination of all of these things. Okay? All right? Yes? No. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to prove something. I see. Okay, well, let me sit down then. Um, Valentine's Day equals the amount of love that you have in your heart, plus the amount of lust that you have your whole past up until now and into the future, plus the hate that you might not even know exists because you want to push them down because you don't like isms, right? So all of your isms, like, oh, I'm not, and I, I like just, you know, and I love green tea, and all of these different things <laughs> that lead you to have conversations in cafes that I write down. Um, so all, all of these, all these things that are happening lead to this, this moment, right, where you're with your loved one and, you, and you're, it's Valentine's Day and you just say something really dumb. And it's Valentine's Day, so you're not supposed to say anything dumb. You're supposed to be like on target the whole day, right? Oh, honey. Mm. And other things that follow. I don't have a script because it would just, I would do it, I would do it, I would do it wrong. Um, and the thing is, is like, I love showing appreciation uh, for my wife. I don't do it enough. I don't. I don't do it enough. I don't think anyone does it enough. Does anyone do it enough? If any of you do it enough, go to hell. Because, because everybody, everybody could use it some more. I'm telling you. It's true. It's true. I think everybody could use the magic love bubble crystal ball fucking chocolate whore 
virtual doll that you want at your disposal all the time, but you just don't have it, you know, because, you know, whatever, you know, it's February, or December, which you've seen me then. Um, so, I'm not even a functional fucking person in December. I'm not, it's just like, people are like Seth, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, and fries. Fries don't even fucking cut it in December. They do nothing for me. I can just, just, I can like wipe my face with them. Nothing, nothing happens. Nothing occurs. But it does. It comes, it comes back to this place where it's like, it is, it is about appreciation. Like, we want to appreciate someone. And so we, you know, then we seek out um, appreciation coaches. Which, which help us tremendously. I mean, I don't know if you've seen appreciationship <laughs> coaches. For one thing, it's a really hard thing to say. Number two, they're like life coaches, but they're a lot different because they're focused on one thing. They're not focused on gratitude. There are a lot of gratitude fuckers out there. This is, <laughs> this is different. This is, this, is about, this is about appreciating. So appreciation coaches are, are, are something like, Where you just 
you want to rip the thing, whatever it is, a person, a place, a system, when you want to rip it apart, that there is like this juicy fucking power in there that you can't necessarily access any other way. Okay? You can get all Gandhi all you want. Okay? But if Gandhi had a little bit of like, well, I don't know, he would have done it. Maybe he did. Maybe he wrote about it. I don't know. Because uh, I haven't uh, read the private journals of Gandhi. I don't have access. WikiLeaks. So, but when you get to that zone, when you get into that particular place where you're just like, you can't see. Have any of you ever seen, read like, really, like, you, you, you fucking lose it and you don't remember a part of your life because you've lost it so much? Whether you screamed at somebody or just, I don't know, like somebody almost hit you and so you just like go into this like That is wonderful. It's incredible. It's an amazing, amazing feeling. And I think one of the things that we really want to do, and I want to start tonight, is just, you know, just fuck off day. Just fuck off. You know, they've been talking about this a lot. This year, people have been talking about, uh, I've been seeing a lot of blog posts about people who don't uh, give a fuck, or gives no fucks. And people are giving no fucks, it's becoming like a thing. Oh, he gives no fucks. <laughs> She's so great, she gives no fucks. But there's, there's something, that, but there's something with that that's kind of like, where you're just kind of pushing something to the side. You're, if you're giving no fuck, you're kind of like, eh. I'm talking about pinpointed rage, kill zone sort of stuff. There's something magical in that. It's, it's, it's incredible. And it's really, really similar to love. I think what we should do on Valentine's Some of you are out there, so I can't necessarily see you, but I, I'm trying to reach out to you. In fact, I'm going to talk to somebody tomorrow about how I can reach the people out out there because I'm having trouble doing it because, you know, I keep forgetting. Sorry. But it's weird because, you know, you guys can see me as a 3D thing, but they're seeing me as a 2D thing. And the thing is that's really awful, right, is that if somebody's watching this right now and they hate it, they can turn it off. But you guys, like, oh man, you're stuck. So you have to hate me internally or hate what I'm saying or doing or thinking or about to say or the fact that my eyes get big when I perform. <laughs> and they can just be like, this guy's stupid. Well, no, I'm not this. Is it theater? Is that, it doesn't look like theater to me. It's all microphone, microphone. Theater people don't know microphone. I've been doing Shakespeare for 28 years, you say, you know? Um, but it's odd, yeah, because we can just turn it up. And I think we should lean. I'm always about leaning. Why, why lean? Step into. Step by step. Step one. We can have lots of fun. Step two. There's so much we can do. Step three, it's just you and me. Step four, I can give you more. Step five, don't you know that the time is right? You kids on the block said it best in step by step. And really, when you think about it, you can have a lot of fun with hate. Step one. Step two, there's so much we can do. You can eat anything you want. Step three, it's just you and me, it's just you and the hate. Step four, I can give you more. You want more hate? Do it. <laughs> Step five, don't you know that the time is right for hate? Yes. So I want to leave you with this. Hate's great. Lust is as well. So is love. There's no problem. There's no issue. There's no like, love better than love sky, love better than hate, dude. There's nothing like that. You want me to sing another song? I'm going to go love somebody. Woo! No. Maybe I will. I don't know. Want to drink something? Put it in the system. See what 
out of tomorrow. I thought it comes out. I was saying how um, earlier to Alexander how I wanted to vomit out of my eyes because I was so upset about something. I found out about somebody, uh, and I found out that they were somebody that I knew through somebody else, and it upset me. And we'll go into it. Um, but I was like, oh my god, I can't believe this person that I know that I know somebody else knows me. I want to vomit out of my eyes. And I don't even know what that meant, but I felt like that was the only way that I could, like, expound, expel, exorcism, exorcism myself. <laughs> if I could exorcism myself. And so it goes back to that appreciation this thing, where if I can appreciate wanting to vomit out of my eyes, if I can appreciate hating someone because they know somebody else I know, that's awesome. That's great, because it's just gonna, it's just gonna go somewhere else. You know, it's one of these things like, now I'm feeling this, now I'm feeling that. Before you guys came in, I was a grump. I was really grumpy. My mic stand was being a jerk, and then I fixed it, you know? Like, something was happening with, with the fucking video thing, and it was fine. It was not a big deal, you know? Now, fucking, you guys all showed up late. You know, you know, I was grumpy. And then I get up here, and yeah, yeah, virginity. And now I'm fine. <laughs> so I mean, the thing the thing to remember with all of this is uh, 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 I was thinking about this earlier today. Is uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, it does. Uh, it does matter. It doesn't matter how we love, hate, and lust, and because we are flex of specs of fickle flex. We're like particle board. Like the particles in particle board. Who, nobody likes particle board. Like we don't want to use that shit because it's like toxic. That's what we are. It's okay. It's okay to be toxic particle. particle. Fuck, man. I can't talk. Should have done some of this. But I didn't because I was grumpy. And I threw up my back. Shoving snap. And then, you know, it's really interesting because I was talking, you know, at the article thing about being uncomfortable and stuff. And, like, I, I just want to take a moment. I'm, I'm really uncomfortable right now. Like, so fearly. And I bet you guys are too. Like, it's just, you know, it, like, like, there were moments. When, yeah. And then there was, like, that. Um, from you. No! No, it was great. Because then I had to be like, mm, alright, that's, that's cool. Saw a few yawns. You know, this is, I mean, this is, this is, and the thing is, is I'm, I'm okay with it. Because, like, what else, what other fucking choice do I have? I'm doing this once a week. Seriously. This is insane. I'm insane. Can we just stop for a minute? I'm fucking nuts for doing this. This is insane. Once a week? It's a new fucking topic. People, don't, don't do this. Don't, one, don't steal my idea. Two, this is nuts. It's like, oh, I'm gonna do season two. What the fuck? Back down. She, what the fuck? But I'm gonna do it. Tune in next week. Uh, we're gonna be talking about creeps, pervs, and shysters. That was, I, you know, and, and let me, I do want to just give a big shout out to my friend Sarah. I had a bunch of other topics for February, and they were a little light. And she helped make them dark and shadowy. <laughs> okay? I'm like, yeah, I love hate lust. She's like, that's better. And I was like, creeps, pervs, and chest. She's like, I'll go to that. Because that's how she talks. <laughs> yeah. Let me massage you. That's how Sarah talks. So if you ever need a massage with somebody who talks like that, you're set. Yeah. Remember, don't do this on your sex partner's stuff. Good night.